Tower of Fantasy. It's not Genshin Impact, but it's hard not to compare them, especially when both are gacha games with an emphasis on open world exploration and real time combat. But does Tower of Fantasy do enough to pull me away from my Genshin addiction? That's what I'm gonna find out. You open the game and you got this Asuka plug suit looking waifu. She's got her butt conveniently placed near the glowing white text, inviting you to enter the game. You pick a server and find two characters being chased by some puppies, and a slightly larger puppy. They were sent by a hooded man and pink waifu because we apparently entered a quarantine zone. Like Genshin, it quickly makes you pick and name your main character. Cutscenes can have quick time events, which I tried to fail on purpose and it didn't seem to change anything. Then it's time to start beating up some zombies. Damage numbers at the start are real low, hitting them with those big exciting single digit numbers like twos and threes. Apparently there's some bad juju in the quarantine zone, hence the zombies. Our suppressor device for it malfunctions and we pass out. The pink waifu finds us and erases our memory and we get found by a chipper girl named Amber, I mean, surely. We also get a tiny companion named Paimon, I mean Mia. Well, unlike Genshin, this game lets you pet the dog, so a thousand points to Gryffindor. But the thing that really sets Tower of Fantasy apart is that we can customize our character. For that, let's add another 10 points. Tower of Fantasy tries to incorporate more multiplayer aspects into it. So being a social game, it's nice that you get to make your own unique character. If you aren't feeling too creative, you can pick user uploaded creations, most of which try to replicate popular characters from other series. And to answer your burning question, yes, this game has two different bus sliders. If you're someone who'd rather have the game developers design your waifu or husbando, you can also do that, but we'll get to that in a bit. With some brand new clothes and completely different everything, minus the character's default voice, you embark on this new exciting adventure of being dragged on some chores, survey missions for the land, and tasks to help out this small group of people trying to survive out here. But soon you'll be fighting some robots and Mad Max looking enemies. The game is all about equipping and switching weapons. You'll often be rewarded with special attacks upon changing weapons. There's a bullet time effect when perfectly timing your dodges, but the catch is you have a dodge meter, so you can only dodge three times before it has to fully recharge. There's also air attacks and combos, which can be a lot of fun. But let's get to the meat and potatoes of any gacha game, which is the gacha. You pull for weapons, each one with different elements and abilities. Most importantly, the higher rarity weapons are tied to unique characters. You link to a database which is filled with combat memories and weapon data of elite soldiers, which can convert the host's personality and behavior. Essentially, you basically have character skins. Silly it may be, but at least the gacha is tied to some lore, unlike Genshin, which doesn't make sense in the story. They also have character quests so you can get more attached to them, but at least the one I played felt pretty lackluster. As for the main story, the settlement gets attacked, during the fight Shirley gets injured, there's a risk that she'll turn into a zombie, so it's up to you to help find a cure for her, as well as discover who exactly you are. So the incentive to keep playing story-wise is dependent on how attached you are to Shirley, or how deep you get into the gacha. From the map, it seems like there's a lot to explore, but it just didn't have a lot of charm to it. But they do make it more fun to run around with the addition of vehicles, jetpacks, and hoverboards. But I will say the elemental system seems pretty bare bones. So after about 5 hours, TOF loses me. Like Genshin, Tower of Fantasy enemies feel like punching bags. At least with Genshin, it's fun to mix and match a bunch of different teams and characters to make hitting those punching bags satisfying. From what I've read, Tower of Fantasy really comes into its own with its endgame and multiplayer content, which is something that's missing from Genshin. However, the story, characters, and world don't do enough to keep my attention to get there. 
So that was my quick impressions of Tower of Fantasy. Let me know in the comments if you tried it or if you want me to do this for other games. But as always, thanks for watching. Subscribing would be awesome, and I hope to see you on the next video. Bye bye.